Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd. Uh, happy autumn. So this is Pastor Squire and Emmanuel and St. Anne's Karen. We welcome you to our morning devotions today. Uh, we're going to continue with the last paragraph of the explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed today. We've been going through Luther's small catechism, and we've been through the Ten Commandments, and now uh, we're in the middle of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, so if you have your catechism with you, welcome to open up to that when we get there. Uh, we are going to continue to follow the devotional outline that Luther gives to us in the second section of the catechism under daily prayers. So we'll be... Um, uh, speaking the creed together and then praying the Lord's Prayer and the morning prayer before we get to our devotion, uh, devotional material for today. So we'll begin, as Luther suggests, remembering that God has made us his children through the waters of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to look at that last paragraph of the explanation for the second article of the Creed. Uh, so if you do have your catechism with you, you can open up to the Apostles' Creed in the first section of the catechism. And the last paragraph uh, reads like this. That I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. So far in the creed, we've heard who Jesus is, uh, the Son of God begotten from all eternity, and also true man born of the Virgin Mary. And because of who he is, he is our Lord. Uh, he is God's Son, and he is the King of all creation. It was through him that all things were made, and for him, and by him. We also learned not only who Jesus is, but what Jesus has done, and that he redeemed us. He bought us back because we were slaves to sin and death. And he didn't do this with gold or silver, but with his holy and innocent blood and his precious suffering and death. And now we see the reason why he did this. He didn't redeem us from slavery to sin and death just so simply that we could go off on our own, but that's so that we could be in God's kingdom that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. So instead of uh, commenting a, a bit today, I'm going to let uh, Paul do the commenting for us. We're going to hear just a snippet from what we heard on Sunday from the epistle lesson, Romans chapter 14, and then just a couple other short passages because 
we can see exactly where Luther got this explanation for the creed. This is all biblical language. This is all language from the New Testament regarding Jesus. And so just a couple of verses from Romans 14. Uh, Paul says, starting at verse 7, For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die... We are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm going to start in verse, at verse 14. Paul says, The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And finally, from, from Philippians chapter 3. Paul writes, starting at verse 8, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So there you have it, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. Praise be to God. Let's sing about that glorious good news this morning. Uh, Hymn number 696 in Lutheran service book. 696, O God, my faithful God. And we'll sing verses 1 and 2 and verse 6. So that's verses 1, 2, and 6 of hymn number 696.
So now we go joyfully to our work and with the blessing of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.